G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. Special movie for Tom Canate D2 in his nursing home in New York. He seems to think that he's become the Pope of permanent magnet flywheel perpetual motion generators and machines. And uh, although we've had a pretty good look at what you'd call static repulsor permanent magnet flywheels, he keeps going on about how he's going to wobble his repulsor magnet backwards and forwards and oscillate it using a bell crank and a spring and a cam and a follower and I thought it might be interesting to just have a bit of a look at a design analysis in 3D on paper. Now to do a design analysis in 3D on paper of a magnetic flywheel first you obviously need to have a cardboard magnet. We know it's a cardboard magnet because when we take this magnetic compass and bring it over beside the cardboard magnet, the compass needle responds to the cardboard magnet. That's probably because I've got an actual bar magnet sitting on top of my cardboard magnet. Now we need the cardboard magnet so that we can take a really 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 small magnetic compass and with the tiny weeny little magnetic compass we can then plot the magnetic field lines all the way around the cardboard bar magnet. And then we can plot the lines of magnetic force onto a drawing using the twiddly little compass. And so we can see that there's an immediate problem if we have an oscillating bar magnet that's pivoted around about its own center of mass if it's a little short thing like that because even if we take this magnet and oscillate it around about its own center of mass in order to remove its drive pole from that on the approaching circumference of the wheel when we do get it into this vertical position or neutral position so to speak you run into the problem of its south pole attracting the north pole so not only do you get a braking force there but you get a braking force across there as this magnet retreats to get to that position whereupon all of a sudden you've got a repulsive drive situation and this will be maybe about there that'll be your maximum propulsive situation as soon as you get a power pulse it immediately begins to diminish because the inverse square propagation law pulls the magnetic poles apart as the flywheel turns so you get a little bit of a kick let's just say five pounds maximum right let's be generous let's say they're really expensive magnets let's say ten pounds five pounds off here and five pounds off there at that point you get a 10 pound kick boink by the time you're out of there you got nothing right to obviate the problems here we're just going to have to use a longer bar magnet or maybe a bar magnet with a iron mass balance off the other end something to remove the south poles field from the rim of the flywheel okay so that's what we'll do we'll go for a long magnet with its oscillation center further away from the rim which gives us an arrangement roughly like that and at the end of a push rod we have a roller cam follower and a spring which pushes the magnet into drive position, right? So we'll just add a spring to that. See the spring? I've just shifted.
shifted the angle of the dangle of the push rod so that you can see the geometry. That is the closest approach. And the spring has to be pushing the oscillating repulsor into position there. It's got to get there in order to be in position. Forgive the spring for rolling away, I will. In order to be in position there for the power stroke. Show you the setup again. The spring has to be more powerful than the lines of magnetic repulsion. And that distance is a whole lot closer than the distance is at the start of the power stroke. Okay? So you're looking at a situation where the inverse square law means that the spring has to be three or five times stronger than the strongest power stroke you're going to get because the magnets come closer just at that particular point and there's nothing you can do about that so if you're going to get a 10 pound repulsive kick you're going to have to have a 30 to 50 pound spring but you know maybe you can fiddle around with the leverages in here at the camshaft end here we see 3D cut out of a camshaft which has 12 millimeters of fall and the push rod is 8 millimeters off center at the bell crank end so we actually get a 1.33 to 1 mechanical advantage for the camshaft over the bell crank but 1.3 is not 3 and 1.3 is not 5 so to get that magnet to come down into position there as the cam follower drops off that cliff on the lobe to reach the power stroke which is in green and bring these two north poles together that spring's going to have to be 30 to 50 pounds and when the 30 to 50 pound spring reaches this part of the cam lobe all of a sudden the flywheel has to lift the follower back up that high as that comes around to there and well I'm sorry but a 10 pound push for 45 degrees versus a 30 to 50 pound push for 45 degrees there is no possible way that the little tiny bit of driving which is going to happen there is ever going to make up for the amount of grunting that's going to be going on there to fight against the spring and the spring has to be there it's just really sad you know like 1.33 is not equal to 3 and it's certainly not equal to 5 and you're going to have to have a 5 to 1 spring over magnet advantage in order to move the mechanical pieces fast enough in order to get anything even your piddly little 10 pound push that rapidly reduces to nothing due to inverse square propagation laws so I would have to say as far as I can see it is not worth cutting a single piece of aluminium or brass or bronze to build a prototype let alone going and buying neodymium magnets when you can you can sit there with cardboard and toothpicks and hot glue and a bit of bloody fuse wire and you can work out that the geometry means it's a dud it's not ever going to achieve unity. It's not that it wouldn't be nice if you could organize magnets on a flywheel and get free energy in perpetual motion and, and cut yourself loose from the oil wells and the coal mines. Sure it'd be nice, but it's a whibniff, or wouldn't it be nice if fantasy? And it doesn't matter how nice it would be if it worked, that doesn't alter the fact that it doesn't bloody work because 1.33 is not equal to 3 and it's certainly not equal to 5. 
Warbles on a lot to YouTube and to Tom Can 82. Move along, mate. This is a dud. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.